good morning children so in the last class we have started the discussion with respect to the second chapter the sexual reproduction in flowering plants in that one we have already discussed about the structure of the flower especially we have discussed about the the pre fertilization structures and events in that one we have discussed about in detail the structure of the andrisium stamen and structure of the microsporangium and also we have discussed about the microsporogenesis with pollen rind structure so today we will continue the discussion with respect to the gynecium see so observe this diagram yes are you observing yes see first of all what is the gynecium the question arises what is the meaning of gynecium the gynecium is also known as pistil it is a, a female reproductive structure of a flower it consists of stigma style and ovary containing ovules inside see observe carefully see in this left side i mean the in the slide the left side there are three diagrams they have given in that one first one a it is actually a, a dissected a flower of a hibiscus showing pistil other floral parts have been removed okay and another one is there is a b is actually a showing the multi corpulary asyncarpus pistil of a papaver and the third diagram it is nothing but a multi corpulary apocarpus gynecium of michaelia champaca okay so before we are going to study about these i mean structures we should understand what is the meaning of the i mean the terminologies so there are three terminologies as i said in that one first one is so the dissected flower which showing the pistil the second one is i said the multi corpulary syncarpus and the third one i said the multi corpulary apocarpus so what is the meaning of this one if you want to know about this one see the right side i have mentioned so it is actually comes under the types of the ovary you know what is the meaning of ovary right yes then here the terminology as i said the monocorpulary what is the meaning of monocorpulary ovary a gynecium with a single corpel or pistil e is known as mono mono means a single okay a gynecium with a single corpel or pistil is known as monocorpulary okay we can give example this type of the structure we can see in the pea plants and there is another terminology multi corpulary multi means many a gynecium having more than one corpel or pistil is known as multi corpulary okay did you got it yes and the terminology see here we have used that one the multi corpulary the pistil may be fused or free what is the meaning of this terminology see there are terminology see what is this one syncarpus syncarpus means a gynecium consisting of fused corpels okay the gynecium consisting of a fused corpels such a type of that i mean the cases we can identify in the so that means lady finger and also papaver species then it will be considered as syncarpus syncarpus means fused and there is another terminology apocarpus a gynecium consisting of free corpels that means it is not fused it is free so such a type of the i mean the uh, corpels are not uh, fused condition can be identified in michaelia champaca it is commonly known as a champaca okay and there are number of cases sometimes we can find a gynecium with only two corpels so then it will be considered as a bicarpulary and there are some cases we can find only three corpels then it will be considered as a tricarpulary okay did you got it see if on um, there are number of cases you know, we have discussed in earlier classes also in the last year also 
when we are discussing the morphology of the flowering plants i told you carpel is the female productive end of a flower it consists of ovary with ovules a gynecium has one or more than corpus it will be diffuse with respect to the different species for example if you see the complete structure here observe carefully this is the a model flower okay so generally we can consider always in the botany hibiscus hibiscus flower we use in our uh, i mean practical stuff so surely we will use in the next coming days okay so here i have gi given the complete diagram observe carefully so this is a complete flower and i told you it is containing both male and female reproductive structures isn't it yes in this one you should observe gynecium okay so gynecium i just said in the beginning so each pistil generally will be i mean consisting of three parts a stigma style and ovary okay so that stigma is the landing surface or we can also say landing platform for pollen rise where it generally okay which will start germinate then the style is elongated a slender part beneath the stigma and there is a bulged portion or basal bulge bulge part we can find there are number of ovules it may be ovules may be few to many with respect to different species it will be number may be vary from one species to another species got it yeah so this is the i mean the structure of the gynecium and also see here so observe this one so how it will be so if you want to study the structure of the gynecium you should take a i mean a longitudinal section that means longitudinal section for the purpose of complete study and also we can take transverse section also but here longitudinal will give more i mean uh, it will be easy for the purpose of studying complete structure from the beginning of the stigmatic surface until to the ovules or ovary so if we take a transverse section you cannot get it the complete structure right so that's why so for the purpose of complete study we will take a longitudinal section okay yes and as i said each pistil has a three parts the stigma cell and ovary the stigma serves as a landing a platform for the pollen rind and the style is i mean elongated slender pod beneath the stigma isn't it and here the basal bulge part of the pistil is the ovary got it yes you can observe neatly and the ovary is a hollow structure having one or several chambers is called ovarian cavity it is commonly known as locules okay yes and after fertilization the ovary matures into fruit and after this i mean area where the ovaries are attached with the ovaries are called placenta the arrangement of ovules on the placenta is called placentation see you can see in the left side i mean the diagram the placenta last year also we have studied the types of placentation right um, i think you must have remember the basal placentation free central marginal like that we have discussed right yes i think you should surely you can recall that one and the arising from the placenta are the megasporangia commonly called ovules the number of ovules in an ovary may be one and to many it may be diffuse from a species to species i told you the ovary may be one then it will be generally it will be containing single ovule for example in case of the monocotyl pelvis especially we can find a i mean the ovary may be one and it may be many for example in case of the papaya watermelon and orchids we can see many got it yeah yes observe this one neatly got it right yes sure so then after this one, let us discuss the structure of megasporangium 
Yeah. See, the megasporangium is also commonly known as ovule. Okay. In the examination, they can ask the, I mean, the question. The right structure of megasporangium is that is understood that ovule only. Or they can ask the right the structure of the ovule and explain the same thing. And they can ask the structure. The right the structure of a typical ovule or anatropous ovule. So, same diagram. So, in NCRT, whatever they have given, I think it is the best one and easy to write one up. Okay? Yeah. Let us start the, the discussion. After the, I mean, the, the structure of the fistula and gynecium, let us start the discussion with respect to the megasporangium. Yeah. So, here, especially the anatropos. What is the meaning of this anatropos? Anatropos ovule is a type of ovule with a funicle bent back on itself and micropyle facing the placenta it may be unitagmic or bitagmic tagma is nothing but layers if it will be one layer then it will be unitagmic and if it will be bilayer we, I, will disc, I will tell you later where it will be the layers may be and again it will be diffused with respect to the different species ok yeah and the ovule where it is attached to the placenta by the stalk like structure is called funicle and the junction ok the junction between the body of the ovule and the funicle is called alum are you observing neatly yes ok then each ovule has one or two protective envelopes that is nothing but integuments okay yes so generally while we are discussing in the last year also i told you so there are i mean the two layers isn't it yes it is inner inner that i mean integument out outer integument got it yes and except that the tip where the small opening the opening region, it is also known as micropyle, okay, where exactly, actually, the pollen tube will move towards the ovule, okay, and opposite to the micropyle end is called chalazal end. The chalazal end it is also known as basal pot, got it? Yeah. And so it is a very wonderful structure. You, are, you can observe neatly. See here, you can identify the complete structure. Yes, the chalazal end or chalazal pole, micropylar region or the micropylar pole or end, helm, finicle, outer integument, inner integument, a nucleus, and embryo shape. See, what is the mean? here again the question, what is this, the enclosed with the integuments, there is a mass of cells, is called nucellus. So, nucellus is actually, it's a, I mean, nucellus is a nourishing tissue of the ovule, found between the integuments and the embryo shell. The cells of the nucellus have abundant reserved food material, which provide the nourishment. Got it. They can ask one last question also. What is the role of the nucellus? It is a nourishing tissue of the ovule. Okay. Then inside that one, what is present? Embryo sac. Embryo sac is located in the, that means nucellus. Got it? Yes. An ovule generally has a single embryo sac form from a megaspore through a reduction division. Reduction division means we have already discussed in the earlier classes. Yes, that is meiosis. Okay, so let it be the remaining things. Next class we will continue. Uh, let me to recall briefly today what we have discussed. We have discussed about I mean the types of the ovary. That is a monocorpillary, multicorpillary. If a ganesium is the single corpel, then it will be monocorpillary. If it will be many multicarpillary, the, if the gynesium is free, then it will be apocarpus, if the gynesium is fused, then syncarpus, then after that when we have discussed about the pistil or gynesium, each pistil, that means the 
having a three parts stigma cell and ovary and then after that one we have discussed about the structure of the mesosporangium okay so let it be next class we will continue the remaining things thank you